If you are eating like a bird and working out like a freaking maniac, you're doing it wrong. You're missing the vital key that is locking up your metabolism. So in this video, we're going to talk about the eight most common problematic hormones that are stopping you from losing weight so that you can finally unlock your metabolism and have sustainable weight loss without working yourself to the bone. going? I'm Dr. Faith. I am your faithful dog and I am an integrative doctor that helps women like you clear the mysticism around your metabolism so you can finally get some sustainable weight loss as well as feel good in your body with confidence and energy. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider joining the tribe. So there are some inherent problems when it comes to weight loss in general, but the one that really just gets my goat is eat less, move more. Every year there's some guru, usually in the fitness industry and the macro weight loss community who likes to talk about, if you just cut 500 calories out of your diet and move more, you can lose weight sustainably every time. In fact, there's a couple problems we probably should talk about when it comes to weight loss that poor women have to deal with that men generally don't. But I'm busy today, so we gotta go pick up the groceries first. So now that we're back, let's talk about the hormones that actually make a big difference in your weight loss. This is really loud. I talk over this, this is gonna be obnoxious. I'm gonna take it all these out. Give me a second. So there are eight common hormones that tend to cause women the most grief when it comes to weight loss. So let's go through them one by one so you understand why it is that you have to address these hormones in order to get sustainable weight loss. The first hormone that we need to talk about is your thyroid hormone. And what that does is if you think of your body as a car and it needs fuel, right? Think of the thyroid hormone as that fuel. It's literally the fuel to the fire of your body. If your body needs something to happen, it'll continue to ask for more thyroid. If your body's not producing enough thyroid, that's when things like like your hair will fall out and your skin will be really dry and you can't poop. Constipation is like a real bummer, you know what I mean? Then it leads to gut health problems as well as the fact that you start gaining weight, you're extremely tired and you just feel like crap. Brain fog is no fun for anybody, especially if you're a high performing woman who just needs to get some shit done, you know? The second hormone you need to be thinking about is your insulin. Now insulin is a hormone that controls your blood sugar regulation, something that's super duper important. We have to regulate our blood sugar or we're gonna get high glycemia and want to pass out when you don't eat enough. So how insulin works is it is a key that goes into a lock that's on the outside of your cell to let glucose in or sugar that gives you energy. The problem that comes along with this is that if your cells are not sensitive to this key, no matter how much it tries to turn, it's not going to be able to open it up and then you're going to have problems with blood sugar dysregulation leading to things like diabetes. The next important hormone that we need to talk about that ties into insulin, how your energy levels work and how majority of people are having problems with weight gain is cortisol you probably have heard that cortisol is a stress hormone which it does increase by our perceived stress stress doesn't always mean running from a bear stress could be you got fired from work you had a problem with the co-worker your business is failing your marriage is failing your kids are yelling at you everything's kind of blowing up or just low levels of stress long durations of programs that you're in school so many other things contribute to this and just for reference you know back in the day when we were primitive humans all we had to worry about was food and if we were going to get eaten by things now it's a much more complicated situation so how cortisol and insulin kind of interact with each other is that when you have high levels of cortisol, it tells your insulin, no, 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 we don't want you to store the fat, we want you to use the fat. But the problem is, is that insulin is persistent and it's gonna say, no, 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 we still need to make sure that the sugar goes into the cell to use it for energy. So they're fighting back with each other and then you have insulin who's like, well, I guess if I can't use it, might as well store it. And so that is why when you get stressed out, your cortisol increases, you have problems with your insulin regulation, you end up gaining fat, usually around the belly. There's other issues with cortisol that you might not have thought of. Cortisol is produced in the adrenal glands and it comes down these pathways, starting with cholesterol, Cholesterol comes down to progesterone and then it goes out and makes a whole bunch of different hormones. What cortisol does is it steals the most important aspect of those hormone making properties. It's kind of like having eggs in a recipe. If you don't have enough eggs, you're gonna have a really dense cake and cortisol steals all the eggs for itself and now none of the other hormones can make they're delicious cakes. That's when you end up having things like wonky periods, no sex drive, no energy, thyroid problems, gut problems, all due to the fact that cortisol is a thieving. Ooh, good raspberries. The next hormone we really need to talk about is our hunger hormones, which is leptin and ghrelin. And while they don't have the exact mechanism in which you need to be looking at to lose the fat, they control your hunger, which is 
equally as important when you're trying to lose weight. So think of leptin and ghrelin as two opposing forces. Leptin helps you feel full because of the fat that you eat, and ghrelin tells you you're hungry when your stomach is empty. The problem is, is a lot of our junk food diets and things that happen with our hormones over time causes these signals to get a little wonky, and then you have problems with feeling fat and starving. Just like our insulin resistance issues, your body can become resistant to the signal leptin, which makes you feel like you're starving when you literally just ate. It's like your fat cells are kind of locked away and they can't hear you and they don't tell your body that you're full. So even after you eat something, you can feel like a bottomless pit. See how I think it's not your motivation, it's actually your hormones? It's because of stuff like this. The next two hormones we need to talk about are your fertility hormones. Now you might not think that your fertility hormones have a big thing to do with your weight loss, but you'd be wrong because you would notice that there's a lot more energy in the way that you feel depending on what part of your cycle that you're in. So with estrogen, there's a couple things that can go, let's say, wrong. One, your estrogen is high in the first half of your cycle, i.e. days one through 14. Well, I should say day five through 14 because one through five is technically when you're on your period and ain't nobody got energy for that, let's just say that. But the most important thing to know is that there's a double-edged sword when it comes to estrogen. You can have a lot of energy in the beginning half of your cycle, but if you have have problems with too much estrogen, then you can have problems with your weight gain. If you're somebody who deals with something like cellulite, for instance, it could be an accumulation of kind of showing you that hormonal balance issue. I find that women tend to have a little more estrogen dominance or carry a little bit more estrogen in two cases. There's probably a lot more, but these are the ones that I see the most common. Number one, PCOS. Unfortunately, dealing with a lot of testosterone is one portion of it that gives you all the acne, the cysts on the ovaries, all that stuff. However, you also have a concern when it comes to having extra estrogen and then therefore they're having problems with insulin sensitivities and, and things of that nature. Now, progesterone on the other hand, because estrogen is so aggressive, it grows your breast tissues, it grows your ovaries, your uterus lining throughout your month. When it comes to the other type of hormone, we're gonna be talking about a more cooling, calming, tampers down that aggressive nature of the estrogen and that is your progesterone. And that is dominant more in the second half of your cycle. Now, the thing with progesterone is that it tends to cause you to have a little more hunger signals. And that's probably because your metabolism does increase in that portion of your cycle at the very end of the cycle. It does take a little more calories to, you know, have a period and like emotions and all the other things that happens when you're on your period at that point. But the other interesting thing is that progesterone actually stimulates ghrelin. And remember, ghrelin was our hunger hormone that makes us feel hungry even if we are actually full. So that's an interesting relationship that you have to consider that it's not just one hormone, it's how they work together. I love brown sugar. Uh-oh, apparently not enough to actually have it softened. I don't know if sugar goes bad, but it's pretty clumpy, that's for sure. So I'm a big moderation person. I don't like to restrict a bunch of stuff because I find that it breeds a lot of disordered eating and eating disorders because people feel like they have to replace every little thing. There are little moderations that you can do throughout your entire experience that will just, you know, make your life a little bit easier and better and you don't have to worry about having the hardest time finding things like xanthium gum. Do I have xanthium gum? Absolutely I do because I try to make things gluten-free and I'm trying to help you guys out for people who have like celiacs and gut problems and thyroid issues. But it doesn't mean that I don't want to make sure that you are in doing things in moderation because it shouldn't be a freaking struggle. It's gonna cause problems with hormone issues in the first place. And I would know because I went through it and I don't want you guys to deal with that. And that's why I'm here in the first place. You're welcome. The last hormone we need to consider is testosterone. And here's the thing about testosterone and androgens in general. Let's chat all about them. There is a big difference between testosterone and active forms and inactive forms of testosterone. I know guys get all the rap for it, but guess what? Testosterone is super duper duper important for both men and women and for weight loss and muscle gain. And here's the thing, it's not just about getting ripped in the gym. It's about your cardiac health. That's a freaking muscle. There's all kinds of muscles on your body that has nothing to do with your skeletal muscles. So we wanna make sure that we have plenty of it on board. I find women that have lower amounts of testosterone not only deal with the whole libido issue, which it's a super important issue. However, I find that they struggle to maintain muscle mass. Muscle tends to burn more fat than having a higher body mass in general. So we wanna be looking at it, not only like a health standpoint, but also like a mentality because testosterone is super important for your motivation drive. It contacts a part of your brain that I like to call the monkey brain or your like caveman brain. It's the thing that makes you want to survive. It gives you that motivation and drive. And if you have low amounts of testosterone, which happens from things like birth control, and high amounts of stress.
excess and plastics and all kinds of things, then you're gonna have an issue not only maintaining good body weight, high muscle mass, you're gonna have high blood pressure, cortisol issues, absolutely no libido, no fun, let me tell you. And it's super important. Now the other side of that is having too much testosterone or androgens, which happens in the PCOS community. Women, when they have too much androgens on board, that's when you start having issues like hair loss, cysts on the ovary, fertility issues, because we're not, a, we're not supposed to have that much. And so it ends up contacting these tissues and overgrowing things like sebum, which is the thing in your face that makes it all greasy. That's why it gets clogged. And then you end up having acne. It, the testosterone gets converted to an active form of something called DHT, which shortens the length of your hair cycle. So then you end up having less hair in the first place. And it ends up growing more cysts on the ovaries, causing problems with ovulation. It's a whole mess. So we want to make sure that we don't have too much and that we also have enough. There is a Goldilocks situation when it comes to testosterone, but it's absolutely important for your weight loss. These are all the hormones that I find super critical when it comes to wanting to maintain and sustain your weight loss. It's super, super important to not only look at the hormones that control it, but also your lifestyle habits, how it interacts with your hormones and the mindset and how that interacts with your body and your mind and how you sustain it. Not only in a long-term sense when it comes to just feeling good in your body and like having habits that aren't going to like make you go insane, but also how to cortisol affect your body and that whole cascade. So if you like the content in this video, go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up so that YouTube can tell other people that you really liked it and that you'll probably like this video that is popping up right now because I talk all about the best diets when it comes to weight loss for specific hormone concerns, which you may or may not be struggling with. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, bye.